Okay, and now it's time for the episode you've all been waiting for. Let's tear down and repair this linear tracking turntable. And I'm gonna have to put a new lead on this anyway if I've just to get this thing to open. So turn this round. Move the camera up. Anyway, so let's take the screws out and let's see what's inside this thing. Alright, we've got those side screws out. Now, what's the best way to take this apart without damage anything? Because I don't know if the tone arm is actually connected to the lid or not. It is on some of these. Let's just let's see. Okay, put the turntable back in place. Now, I don't actually see any sign of a motor that would have had a belt connected to it, so, uh, you know, I think this might actually be a direct drive. If it is, I'm going to be really chuffed about that. Anyway, let's take this plate off here and we'll see what's actually under there. There's if I can find a screwdriver small enough to get into those little tiny screws. There we go, we can now have a look at what's under this plate. So I might be able to remove the turntable platter now. And is it direct drive? Is it direct drive? I think it is. Yes, it is. It's a direct drive turntable. So you know what that means? No replacement belts to worry about. Although there might be one there on the actual tone arm itself, but that shouldn't be too much trouble. Anyway, I'll just put that to one side while we uh, continue tearing this thing down, replacing the power cord, and seeing if it works. Okay, I was going to take the bottom plate off, but unfortunately there's uh, some of the things in there, so I'm just going to have to leave that unscrewed as much as I can for now. So I'm just going to turn this around, and oh, hang on, something's falling apart here. Yeah? I think my arm was blocking the thing. What have we got here? Okay, this kind of, this is quite know what, don't quite know what's going on here. Um, let's see. Hmm. Okay, this bit looks like it comes out. Um, might have to put those screws back in actually. But first, let's take off the rest of this thing. Alright, well, taking the back plate off now, as you can see, well, that appears to be the only way I can get into this thing. And it looks as if this entire front part, at least if I was showing the camera at it, this entire front part comes out, and that's where you actually, I think, That's how you insert the records. I'm not quite sure what this is for though. I mean, if it's pulled out partially, I can push this up and down. If I pull it out all the way, it stays down. I didn't even push it. I'm not sure what that's all about. Anyway, there appears to be a motor right here connected to a gear. And that appears to be what actually moves the thing in and out because on the actual back plate, there's a gear train right here. You might be able to see it if I could just move the camera into for. So that's what moves the thing. I'm going to have to obviously screw that back in because I took out all the screws. But you should be able to see how that works. And here's the motor that moves the tone arm along. The belt still seems to be good, so we don't not gonna need to replace that. Well, I have taken the needle out of the cartridge just to protect it. So I'm gonna see if I can put on a new power cable and a new output cable, and I will see if this thing works. Okay. Decided to move the operation to my bed because I've got much more work to room there. Anyway, I have put on new wires. 
have a new men's league now. Also new audio output leagues. Just got to put this little shield back on. On there. Connect these two grounds. Then put it all back together and we'll see if it works. Well my loyal fans and trolls. Good news and bad news. Good news is it's alive. Just having to hold it here so it doesn't tip over the edge because it's just about to fall off right there. Which I can just about just about balance there. But like I said, good news and it does play. It's alive and it does play. I'll just put on a manky old record for now. You can give it a listen for yourself. I shouldn't get any copyright strikes for playing this because these aren't original. So anyway, that's the good news. Now the bad news. Well, firstly, the not so bad news. This is going to need a new needle, but I bet you can expect that from something like this. The only really bit bad of news is that there's absolutely nothing I can do about the cover. Remember there's this nasty crack in the cover? Well, what I thought I could do was maybe remove this window and replace the plastic with a bit of perspex or something. Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do that because it's all one piece. Yes, this is all just made out of clear plastic, painted silver here. And there's a sticker here, which is the bezel for the window. So that's really not much I can do about that. The only other thing I had to do to this was fix this bit that goes up and down on the tray because every time this tried to close this bit right here would catch on this piece right here so it wouldn't close all the way so to fix that I just put a little bit of plastic here which pushes that down as it slides closed so now doesn't catch and that is now nice and good the only other thing is that when I try and play a 45 on this, it doesn't always move the tone arm all the way over and then drop it on the 45. It puts it in the same place it would be if it was playing an LP. As I'm trying to demonstrate, it'll probably do it perfectly this time. Yeah. So sometimes it will do it, sometimes it won't. Oh, that's not... No, I've just knocked my headphones down. That's not too much of a problem. I can just move it. I can move it. And then drop it down like that and play. And it won't play too much of that. Probably will get copyright strikes if I play even a femtosecond of that. I don't know what's under YouTube's content ID or not. Only thing really to do now is to get this a new stylus and give everything a damn good clean. And well, here we are. I'm gonna say that's a job well done. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>